hopefully that's why you do drinks literally like first dates i do drinks be like let's just wrap this up just do the yeah check <laughs> what up charms we are back with single in the city i know i've been gone for a minute but we just gonna jump right into it like we ain't never stopped so let's get into the segment of dating so dating we all have done it we've been in it some may like it some may not me personally i like to date i like to try you know different things get a feel for different people and it's kind of the time to kind of get to read and understand different personalities and understand what attracts to you and what does not. So let's just jump right into it because, you know, you grow up, we just gotta get into it. All right, first thing I feel like is very important to do when you are starting to date or if you are currently dating a new person is create like ground rules for yourself and for your person you're dating. Like, personally, I feel like once you have, like, rules that you set that you feel comfortable with, your partner feels comfortable with, it creates a better environment and it makes it more healthy for something to flourish. So, with that being said, personally, like, something that I would put on my, like, rule guide is the whole, you know how people like the Netflix and chill? But if I'm a Netflix and chill, it has to be in a living room. I'm not going to Netflix and chill with you in the bedroom because... That's how things go a different route that you did not either one intend on going or two, you decided, you know, you felt the moment of weakness and you just was like, all right. So that's the rule for myself. Another rule that I think would be very helpful for like women is for you to create like an understanding or like a communication path because that is like the number one thing that I've learned in my dating like history that ruins a lot of things and it does just stop because the lack of communication on either my end or that person's end because we didn't create like a understanding of what our communication is like. So that's important to do too. So me personally, everybody know who know me, no, you do not text me. I am not a person you text because if you text me, I may one, either read it, forget to respond or two, I text it and then it just sounds real boring or dry. So I'd rather you just call me. So I'm a person that you would call. Like I'm that type of communicator. Also, I'm the type of person if I'm dating you, I do not text you throughout the whole day. I don't understand how women do it. I don't understand how men can do it because I'd be like, how are you not busy? How are you not at work? How are you not like doing something else with your life? Like, you should not be able to sit here and text me all day because I didn't get the time to sit here and respond to you all day. So, I like to communicate at the end of the night. So, like, I like to communicate around, like, 9 or 10 o'clock just to give you an update on what's going on in my life so you can be like, oh, so you feel included. Now, I'm not a person where we got to talk every day. Now, you can do a check-in point just to be like, hey, just checking in, see how you're doing. But we don't really got to sit here and be on the phone for hours because that's not realistic. We all are working young adults. We have a life. Like, I hope you have a life outside of the person you're dating. If you don't, you definitely need to get one because he should not or she should not be your life. Let's, let's get that right. So speaking of communication, when you communicate, if you have a problem that arises, please, please, please say that you have this problem. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to read mine. I'm not. I'm not going to read your mind. I'm not expecting you to read mine. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. And I'm hoping if you care about whatever it is that's developing, you'll try and resolve it. But that's the number one thing that's a cue point. Like, ding, 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 red flag. Is if you express to the person that you're dating that you either felt uncomfortable or you didn't like something. And they kind of just brush you off like you didn't say nothing. You need to stop there because they don't respect one your feelings and they don't respect that you are actually trying with the situation and they're clearly that's not their intent you can also read off of people when you communicate with them what their intentions are with you but i'm gonna get into that a little bit more in the video but definitely communicate with what the problem is if you tell this person that you don't like how they have the lack of communication and they tell you i'm gonna do better and they don't do better then it's like, okay, I'm gonna bring it up one more time. And I'm gonna be like, look, you told me you were gonna do better. You haven't done better. So at this point, I just feel like there's no point of us even communicating anymore. You have to be okay with letting people go. Like, that's something you have to understand. Like, you may not want to. You may feel like, I really have a connection with this person. I have history with this person. But sometimes 
History and connections is not what's healthy for you. Because I'm all about what's healthy for you, what's going to create a healthy environment and a relationship and a growth space for you. Your relationship should not be draining. Your dating should not be draining. Dating should be fun to you. It's supposed to be a stress reliever. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself. So if you feel like you're dealing with a person who just make you stressed, cut that right there. Because I should not be stressed when I get off work, when I get out of class. I'm talking to you and I'm hearing you just gang 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 going off on me. That's not what I'm here for. All right, so I mentioned earlier how you need to read the room. Read the room is red flags. That's, that's the code for red flags. Read the room because reading the room when dating is like the peak and like the highest tier of what's gonna set the standard for if anything is to grow, what's gonna be acceptable, what's not. So if you see a red flag, you either nipped it in the bud or you just get out right now. So some red flags that a lot of people have noticed or I've personally experienced is like sometimes people can be like overly sexual or they'll try and like bring up sex too quickly. Like I've only been communicating with you for maybe two, three weeks and you're already bringing up sexual actions. That's a red flag to me because that tells me what your intention is right off the jump that your intention is just sexual actions. And that's not my space right now. So if that's not my space and that's not your space, cut that person right there because you've already wasted three weeks and you ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. I'm going to just tell you right there. If he bringing that up in three weeks, that ain't going nowhere. Cut that right there. Hey, this one recently just happened to me. This guy literally was bringing up his ex. Like, that is like the number one no-no in common sense world when dating. Do not talk to the person you're dating about an ex someone you used to talk to, your baby mama. Do not bring that up. Do not bring that up. Because if you bring that up to me, I'd be like, so you still love her or you still love him? Because clearly, you sitting here on a whole new date talking about your ex. I don't want to hear about your ex. I'm not your ex. You better call her. Because clearly, you have some pent up aggression that you need to get out and you might need to communicate with her because I'm not the one. So if you hear him sit here and it's okay like if you bring up like yeah I've been in a relationship and the situation went left. I understand that okay and I may ask you like okay what was the reasoning it went. All you should really say is like oh either one it was just we weren't at the right time time place. Two cheating or three it's just we just outgrew each other. Okay. If you, you can say this and then that's the end of the conversation. If you dragging it on like, yeah, you know, I really loved her. I don't care about none of that. Why do you think I would care? I don't. I'm going to tell you that, Matt. I don't care. I'm going to really be like looking at the bartender. Hopefully, that's why you do drinks. Literally, like first dates, I do drinks. Be like, check, check. Yeah, check. Because, no. All right. So this one, I think, is really big within, like, being in your early 20s of dating. And some people may have a disagreement with what I'm about to say. Hey, I'm a person, I read red flags from social media. Like, I don't care what nobody say. They'd be like, social media isn't representation of who I am whatever okay i get that it's not representation of you a hundred percent but there's a percentage of what you're doing on twitter or instagram or whatever that's a representation of you it's something that you like it's something that you like to do so if i go on your account most likely i'm gonna be just wholeheartedly blunt i do twitter twitter is like the number one source to read the room because if i go on your twitter account and i'm seeing titties ass, lingerie, um, fat ass, that kind of thing. I'm like, okay, so your whole thing, you're a sexual person. That's what I'm going to read from that. And people will be like, I don't take social media here. You need to, because sometimes these people will be some stream wackos and be out here having like, who knows what type of fetishes and then you're dating them and you're not even paying attention to the red flags. One thing I do pay attention to, and people are like, why are you paying attention to that? Likes. I'm not going to lie to you. If you over here overly liking people's stuff, I'd be like, I know you don't know all these girls, personally. All right. So another thing. Do not start doing girlfriend slash wifey things. You are not that. You are literally dating. You are literally getting to know this person. The dating phase doesn't even have a time frame. 
it starts from, I really want to say like that third week of y'all been communicating, whether it's texting, just calling, it's that third week, I would say, starts the whole dating process, like where you all are actually going out, hanging out. Do not be out here telling people this is your man. Girl, you just met him last week. Pump your brakes. Pause. It ain't, mm -mm. I'm gonna just help you right now. Do not sit here and try and see a long-term future with someone you just met two, three weeks ago. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Cause I could meet you two, three weeks ago and I could be like, I actually hate you. Who's talking anything below five to six months and you thinking long-term? That's not realistic, it's not. So many things can happen. So many things can transpire. You can still learn stuff. Like you're still learning things about people. That's why I don't rush the whole people just jumping into the relationship just because I'm still learning a lot about the person I'm dating. Last point is do not be overly available. Please don't. Like, because once people know you're just always available and on go and just ready like that, then they think they got you and nobody can have my charms. I'm gonna just tell you that right now. Cause when I say that, don't be overly available. I'm saying in the sense of do not be picking up his call at two, three, four in the morning. Him talking about, let me come pick you up and you can spend a night at the No, don't do it. Y'all are not together. Even if y'all were together, you should respect my sleep enough to be like, I'm not even finna call her this late at the night. So that's the booty call hours. We're not doing that. We're dating. So if we're dating, no. If you can't get me at a reasonable hour, no. And I also mean that in the sense, even if he wants to take you on a date. I know ladies, it's hard for us to be like, hey, I could go on the date. All right, you have to know at the same time, when you go on the date, you're giving up something. It's give and take. So, me personally, I'm not putting a date over my girls. I'm not. If I already planned something with my girls, I'm going to tell him, look, I already had something planned, but maybe we could do something next weekend. I'd rather have those long-lasting friendships than potentially try and grow a relationship. Especially because I don't know how long you're going to be here. These people have already been here some years, so I'm not going to be like... Screw y'all, let me go see him. And he finna be gone next week. Like, I don't got time. So, you have to make yourself, even when you are available, don't be available. Like, if he call you and he be like, oh, what you on tonight? Oh, I'm supposed to go out with so-and-so to the bar. Why, what's up? I was gonna ask if you wanted to go out to dinner. Oh, um, I can't tonight, but maybe we can go tomorrow or next Wednesday. Like something like that. Because it's like, all right, well dang, she just ain't just willing to go when I'm she gonna kick with her girls instead of kicking it with me. Yes, I am. Because that just shows that you have other things going on in your life besides just ready to go when he says you're ready. So think about that. That's a good thing to think about. That's a good mentality to have. Like, don't just drop things because he texts you, he calls you. You also have to have that understanding when you do that there's a possibility you might take somebody out. All right, you can do that, because I'm not your girl. I'm not your girlfriend, I'm not your shorty, I'm just someone we getting to know right now. So you have no entitlement to me, just like you have no entitlement to him. You can't be sitting here saying, well, you can't go out with no other person but me. Okay, you're not being realistic. I'm, I'm gonna just tell you that right now, because even when I'm dating, I'm not dating in this, I'm just dating this one person, because the one person may not be a good fit for me and now I've missed out on the opportunity of a different person. So when you're dating, please keep your options open. Don't think, oh, this is the one, this is gonna be the one and only person I'm about to date. No, don't do it because you're gonna hurt yourself in the long run and you're gonna be very upset with yourself because you're gonna be like, dang, I passed on the rails to be with Antoine and Antoine ain't shit, now you pissed. So, Keep your options open until you feel like anything is growing in one direction with whatever person it is you're dealing with. So as always, Charms, thank you for watching. Go like, comment, and subscribe. Go share this video because there's so many women who may have questions, who may be going through certain things when dating, just to give them some tips and guides on what they should, shouldn't do when they're dating. Go ahead and subscribe so you get that notification once it is time for a single in the city part three to drop. Bye Charms.